Dear Father, thank you for bringing us to the church again. Uh, we ask you to give us understanding so that we can review this lesson very well and also give us the strength and the willingness to put this knowledge in action. In the name of Jesus, we ask you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. We are dealing with the uh, important lessons that uh, talk about big questions that we have in our lives that many times we don't find the answers, right? Uh, memory text. The faith is what? The substance that? Of the things hoped for and the evidence of things that we cannot see. All right. Usually we think about this for something that we don't know about the future or a big decision or something. But also, we think about it in relationship with what we are studying with suffering. First of all, we don't like to suffer. We, ex we make the exclamation, ouch, it hurts, we cry, and so on and so forth because of it, right? Because we don't like it, it is bad. And because it is bad, oftentimes we, we say, if, instead of ouch, when we are, we have a little moment that we can think just a little bit, we say, why? We don't understand. We don't, why, do we, why do I have to go through this? Why is this thing happening to me, right? We don't understand it. And in the book of Job, we know that something to Job was happening really, really, really bad. And he went through all those stages. He went, ouch. And then he didn't know why those things were happening to him. Now, Besides that we have the right to say, ouch, do we have the right to ask? To ask questions, of course. Do we have that right? Okay, now. There's a lot of bad suffering in the world. I'm talking about not just like a toothache, upset stomach, no, I'm talking about Generalized diseases that happen throughout the world. The millions have died because of it. Wars and so on and so forth. Those are big questions. Why? I think a lot of us here, we have probably reached a conclusion that if we are going to have children, we're going to be prepared for it. We're not going to bring a bunch of children, let me say it that way, if we don't have a way to support them, right? But if we do have them and they are going through, like they don't have anything to eat, somebody can say, why? The children say, why? Right, now in this case, job, he was here on earth. And all those things happened to him, right? Lost the children, lost everything he had, and so on and so forth, friends and family, they were telling them, you did something wrong, and so on and so forth. Then he finally passed the stage of, ouch, it hurts, to the one of questioning. Why? And who did he talk to about asking why? The friends? No. The wife? No. He talked to God. Right? Did he follow the advice of the wife and friends? No, if he did, he would have said, well, you know, the same thing. You know, they say, you know, like, well, you know, I'm sorry, I did something wrong. No, he was asking why did this thing happen. Obviously, he didn't know what was going on in the universe, right? The war between, between who? God and Satan. God and Satan. Right? Let's see. And, and, and the introduction gives us that close example when a lot of suffering is going on and there's no really answers for it. Or people, if they don't uh, look for uh, answers, they don't ask God, then they're going to come up with a bunch of, uh, let me say it again that way, with a bunch of what, of ideas of why. And usually, if not all the time, they're going to be wrong, right? In this case, the introduction tells us about the story of children 
you know, dying and suffering, and then they couldn't come up with the right answer. Now, let me tell you something. They, some of, uh, some of the people don't go to church. They cannot really sometimes, many times, come up with the answer. Now that we're here in, 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 in the church, do we have the answer for the suffering? Mm -hmm. We do. <coughs> and we can say, we can still say, right, why? <coughs> And the answer, I'm going to give you the answer. The answer is because it's a mystery. We don't know. Pain and suffering wasn't supposed to be. God, when he created us, he created us with the intention that we would live happily forever. <coughs> Something happened, we don't know. Something happened in, in Luc Lucifer, right? In his heart. In his heart. Something happened with him. And then chaos. We have all kinds of suffering. But we don't, we cannot explain it. It wasn't supposed to be. Right? So many times, this is, they don't talk much about it in the lesson, but it gives us the idea. Sometimes, if we are trying to look for answers where there are no answers, we're doing what? Wasting our time. We should be content with what we've been given. But let us talk about the detail until we reach that conclusion. But sometimes, we have all the right in the world to to complain and to ask, right? Like just like God, and that's what He's doing on this on this lesson, right? Now, what did the friends and the wife were telling uh, Job? What he was going through all that? What was their answer? Their their conclusion? Okay. That, that he did what? He did something wrong. Did something wrong? Yes. And he had searched his heart, and he knew that. He had left anything ah, so not only the friends and the wife, Job was also in doubt. Why did I do? Right? And he searched his heart. Mm -hmm. He knew. That he, he found out that I had done, really hadn't done anything to deserve this, right? <coughs> Let's see. So, he couldn't find the answer. He looked, he searched his home, he heard his friends and everybody that was close to him, and he couldn't come up with, a, with a, an answer. So, he turned to God and asked God, Right? Why are these things happening to me? If you gave me the life just to go through this suffering, why did, you, why did you give it to me? Right? But we don't know that we don't know the tone of his of, of, of his words. We're reading them. We don't know if he, he was just saying, you know, listen, it doesn't I don't understand it. Not in not in a complainful way, but in like a what should I say? Intuitive, like requesting information. Why? I know that you gave me life, and you give, me, and I know that you're 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 full of love, that you want to give me the life so that I can be happy. And this is happening. Explain to me why. Right? It's a big question, isn't it? And he even wished that he wasn't born. He was dead when he went yeah. out of his mother's womb. He would have been better if you just, as soon as I was born, I would, you would have put me to death because I don't have to go through this suffering, right? Why? But now, we now, we have the privilege ourselves of looking at past history and more than just the history of Job because we know that there's a big conflict. We know that Satan challenged God. And says, you know what? You know he's good because you follow, you you protect him, you give him all these nice things, right? And I said, okay, take everything away from him, and you'll see that he's still going to be faithful to me. Job didn't know that, right? Just like we, we don't see the whole picture. Okay, we don't. Now. We don't see the whole picture, but we know about job and we know about faith. So, because we don't know, we should do what? <laughs> let, let me, first I need to give you another example. Children, children do this all the time. Sometimes we do it ourselves, right, at work. We need to clean the house. They need to clean the house. The parents, okay, I'm gonna go to work. When I come back, I wanna, uh, I wanna see the house clean. If they wait till the last minute, sometimes they're not gonna finish. And they're gonna get caught with the house upside down, right? 
So they know that and they didn't do anything about it. Now, we know about this. We should act accordingly. Right? Now we have the knowledge that even though things don't have an explanation, don't have an answer, we should have what we read in the memory text. It is what? Starts with a math. We have to have what? Faith. Do you want me to read it again? It says, Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. We don't see what is going on. We don't know what the future is going to bring. That's when faith comes along. We don't know if we're going to suffer. We don't know if we're going to be rich. We're not going to be have half health. Whatever. The, let me give you that the answer now before we go before we run out of time, right? The answer is whether we're doing good or whether we're doing bad, we're going to have to stay loyal and faithful to God. Amen. Because if we don't, then we're going to get in trouble. Amen. Right? Whether in good or bad, we need to be faithful to God. Just like in the house, we always have to be prepared. But faith is the same thing. I lost a stepson who was 21. I lost a sister who was 33. And a son who was 33. And of course, everybody wonders why. I never had that problem. Because I felt that the Lord probably let them go at a time they were the closest to him. And that was the Lord's decision, not mine. Mm -hmm. And the overall picture, the Lord knew and I didn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I said, well, there's a saying, I'm not, I'm not the only one saying that, that knowledge is power. Right? The more we know, the better. There's, and in this case, we know that there's no answers sometimes. We know that there's going to be a second resurrection. We know the second coming of Jesus. We know all these things. So when we encounter problems that really, really, really hurt, we have hope and we have faith. Amen. So I can't finish the lesson right now with what I just said, right? Because that's, that's what it's talking about. Now we have Dwayne, please. Yes. Um, a, a text comes to my mind as uh, she finished her uh, the sadness of what happened uh, uh, to her to her life. Uh, that makes me that, that makes life meaningful. Otherwise, otherwise, life is a nothing but a terror. And that is where Jesus said, "My peace I give unto you, mm -hmm. not as what the world." Give us that idea. No, and because the world, the world can't give us peace because we have the, we have the deception of Satan at all times attacking us with lies, with uh, uh, injuries, mm -hmm. uh, and the Lord uh, is still in charge, mm -hmm. and he gives us that that balance of peace that uh, that is not anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It isn't. Exactly. Regardless of what happens, it's hard it's hard to accept that at times because. Uh, I, I've had experiences too that have been just awful. Mm -hmm. No answer why. Yeah. No answer. Mm -hmm. But you gotta, you got to accept that word. Yeah. And, 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 and like as I played with words a little bit, we have to have the knowledge that sometimes there is no answer. Right? Mm -hmm. right. right? And, 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 but someday we'll go. As much as, and whatever God can Give, will give us. Because, again, we are not God. No, I mean, someday. But someday we will learn, uh, learn a lot of things, right? We're never going to know everything, uh, uh, just to, but uh, I agree. Sometimes we're going to have an explanation that is going to satisfy us, right? Uh, I was going to say, because, you know, like, in relationship to Wayne and, and, and you said, right? The world cannot give us that. And, I, and I'm going to make a comment on that. We have a job to do, right? We, as a church, we have we have a, a, a mission, a commission that, that God gave us, that Jesus Christ gave us, right? Amen. Uh, it becomes difficult 
because the world doesn't think like us. Yeah. The, God's image has been blurred. And they don't want, when they say that I don't want to have anything to do with religion, of course, I notice they are afraid to say I don't want to have anything to do with God. The more, most of the time they say I don't want to have anything to do with religion, right? right. They, they feel safer to say that. Mm -hmm. It's because the image of God has been blurred. Amen. They think here in the, the church is going to be a prohibited set of laws that's going to keep them from doing whatever they want to do for one of the things that they, they, they see. They don't see the benefit of coming to the church that are supporting God's cause with our thighs and all that stuff. They don't see it. They think it's a waste. Because they see the abuses that some people in the name of religion and God, they've done something really, really, really bad. And they see that, so God's image is blurred. Why? Because they don't go to the right source to look for answers or the questions. Because they have the, all the right also to, to ask, why? Why they're suffering? Oh, and they, they blame God, of course. And we know where all that stuff's coming from, right? And we have to have faith because sometimes we have learned since we were little that if we do something wrong, something bad is going to happen to us. And if we do something good, we're going to be rewarded, right? Do we learned that very well. What happened here with John? What did he do to deserve such a faith? So it doesn't go along with what we've been taught, right? If we work hard, we're going to be rewarded. We're going to get a bigger paycheck, right? If we do something wrong, we're going to be in the poorhouse, right? And I'm going to explain that you know, easy, in an easy way. But in this case, it didn't work. God, when he created us, he created us with the intention that we were going to be forever happy with no problems. And what happened? Satan changed it. Satan came over and changed it. When he created Lucifer, he created with the intention of for, for Lucifer to be forever and ever the beautiful archangel, right? And what happened? Right? Well, but he's, he's got a plan to fix all that, right? And uh, Joel, mm -hmm. perhaps at that moment, didn't, didn't understand very well the same in God and so on and so forth, but he had something very important. We already mentioned He had faith, right? He trusted God. He gave, he gave God, he acknowledged that God was the Almighty and respect God. Mm -hmm. And therefore he could take all, he, he took all that suffering. Yes? Uh, yes, I'd like to read some. Uh, trust in God is an easy thing to articulate when we are doing fine. But to really experience trust or faith when things go wrong is another thing. With each problem or struggle, suffering or difficulty, we should as Christians trust in the goodness of God, not because we feel like it, but because we know it is true. This is what Job expressed when he proclaimed, Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Right? We shouldn't be, what is that saying? Fair weather friends with God? Only when things go right? Right? That's not French and Greek, right? So it is very important to trust God because at the end, if we were loyal to him, we have, that's going to be the real reward that nobody can take away from us. Right. Yes. When my mom died, she died at the age of 65. And um, after she was buried, you know, I saw how she was suffering first in the hospital a lot. And um, I opened it, and I went to the book of Job, mm -hmm. and I read the text, the text that says, the Lord give and the Lord give. And that's what consoled me. Although my sister, she mourned for her ear because of my mom's death. But I, I told her, I found in God's word that the Lord allowed us to be born and when time, sin caused that. Sin is what caused that and suffering. 
So we can't get rid of, rid of it until Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. And then now, uh, I believe, right, if we are faithful to God and, and, yes, and we want to be with Him, He'll make it happen. If we, need, if we need to be put to sleep in order to be with Him forever, He will do that. Amen. Right? Because if I continue living the life that I, that the day so on and so forth, I may go astray and, and, and lose my life in eternity, right? So He will do that. So, when He says He can give a life and He can take it, it's not just take it and that was it. He's got a purpose. Right? He's got a purpose and we have to have faith that he's a, he's a good he's good and he will do something good to us. Yes. Just want to tell you about that. Sometimes when we say why? Why me? Sometimes I say to me, why not me? And if I have to, I have to accept the things that we do not understand mm -hmm. and know that God will be with us and he will fix all things, even though we don't know why. Mm -hmm. But I rely a lot on the promises that he will never give me more than I can handle yes. and that he will be with me even to the end. Mm -hmm. I hurt sometimes so excruciatingly, and sometimes I can't take it just by day by day. I have to take it by hour by hour. Mm -hmm. But I still really rely on God that he will fix it and he will take care of me. Amen. Mm -hmm. If not, in his lifetime, he will take care when he comes back, right? That, that's the hope that we have. And the one that, 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 makes us, that keeps us going. Otherwise, we lose that and we won't care, we won't care about anything. That's why the word, the peace of the word, is we're not going to find it there because it's not really peace. They're just do whatever because they're, 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 they're thinking that they're going to live only a few years and that's it. So they do all kinds of crazy things, right? But if they had hope, they would live a better life. Amen. But you know, but the devil puts a barrier and shows a different story of God so that people don't trust him and so on and so forth. And our job here is to clear that image. To clean, present a good image uh, of God to the people so they can get closer to Him. They're not afraid. Right? Now, they were saying, including Job, that, uh, that he was like a, a, you know, a, sin, a, a sinful man. Now, is that a true statement? He didn't do anything to deserve his faith. But in a way, we all are what? Yeah, sinners. sinners. So it's kind of a, we have to understand what, what are we talking about here, right? He didn't do anything to deserve the faith that he went through, right? What, what happened to him, lost the children, so on and so forth. But in a way, all of us are part of the race that is sinful and condemned to die. Now, well, that, you know, it's easy to say that if we think about it, we're condemned, we're doomed. But it, that, the story doesn't end there, right? Because we have what? Of what? And what is our hope or the hope in Jesus Christ because of he, he, we are doomed, condemned to die because we're sinners, right? But he, paid the price. he paid the price for us. You see, that's what, well, that's what, that, that's a hope. Now we, you know, like we know our shortcomings, we know our, our difficulties, we know the struggles that we have in the, in the observing the laws, the rules, right? The, I call it checklist. You know, we go and check each one at a time. The best that we can do is we can check nine of out of those ten, right? And and in, in school, ninety percent it's an A, right? But in in in, in the universe rule, ninety percent, ninety nine point nine percent is what? Is failure. So we need help. So the help comes from Jesus Christ. 
the had faith in God and everything else will come and be put into place. That's why John was able to take all those hardships that he went through, right? Some of us, we gotta ask for forgiveness because sometimes we just trip or something and we're complaining so hard that it's like somebody's trying to kill us, right? So we, we have, this is a big lesson for, uh, for us, right? To learn about that. Ay, ay, ay. Now, the Bible also talks about common knowledge. I don't know if it, it's mutual, I think. Sometimes we learn from the Bible, sometimes things in, in, in a world culture, I, you know, it goes in agreement with what we learn in the Bible. But what do we gain by complaining? Nothing. We're just what? Wasting our time and efforts. Right? So if we're going through some hardship and we complain about it, what are we going to get? Nothing. We should what? Try to take it and find a solution or be in peace and so on and so forth. It is better. Even when we go going through a big problem, if we don't think clear, we'll make it even worse. So the Bible will tell us, what does it say? Let this own day have its own problem. Don't worry about tomorrow. Right? That's what it's trying to tell us. Don't worry about how, what happened before. Worry about what you're doing right now. Because Amen. you cannot change the past, and you don't know what the future is going to bring. Amen. Right? <clears throat> what else? Sometimes we worry about even about things that we don't even see. <laughs> Sometimes I said, you know, even the things that I don't need make me sick. You know, like it's it's, it's so absurd, right? Uh, no, that was something. Good. Suffering is real. Although we shouldn't be worried about stuff, things, stuff that is not happening to us, suffering is real. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with it, right? As we've been saying. We do have the right to complain and to ask questions. But not to worry to the point that we're making them worse. Not to the point that we are denying God. Not to the point that we are going to walk away from God because this is happening. Because he's got a reason. Our sister here is playing. Lost the mom. Right? Son. God's got a plan for us. Right? What else happened to our lives? We lost a job, we lost things, we had something bad happen to us, right? God's got a plan. Now, he didn't cause those bad things for us. It was the enemy that caused them. Let us not think about the world. The world blames God for it, right? God can turn. Turn it around and protect us. Even that allows that to happen because he knows us. For example, I'm going to give you this last example, right? Money. Why am I, I don't have a lot of lots of money? Perhaps it's because God knows that if I have a lot of it, I'm going to turn back. So he doesn't, he's not giving me any, more money than what I have. Right? It could be. So why should I worry about that? You know, I try my best to go to work, work hard, so on and so forth. But let us not worry about tomorrow. See, all the lesson, all these things is telling us, take it easy. Don't worry. God is in control. Amen. Don't worry about all the noise that the enemy is making. It's, that's just noise to distract you. Right? So the goal that we have is to live with, with, with God for it. So Job took it because he was he's respectful and thus was very strong. He can do anything and he if he can do, he made us so he can do whatever he wants with us, right? He knew that and he respected that. But he also knows 
He trusted God that he, although he can do whatever he wants to do with us, he always wants to do with us what? Something good. Right? So, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter what he was going through. He had faith. The other ones were already stumbling around him. But he remained loyal to God and said, no, God's got a plan. He asked the question, so on and so forth. Was he rewarded? Amen. See, we have faith that we're going to be rewarded in the second coming. But sometimes God even rewards within our life. Like he went to John. Amen. But if he doesn't, we still have to repent. Faith. Amen. All right. That's the end of the lesson. Thank you.